All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We're looking at the greenhouse today. I thought I'd update you guys on the state of this thing. It's really crazy, actually, uh, how fast the fig trees in here have grown. They're at the top of the greenhouse. It's probably a, uh, I wanna say a seven foot height at the top. Um, and almost all the trees are just, they have so much heat. They've been awake for so long of my season, they've been awake really since March, that they're just taken off. And they're really, they're taller than any of the in-ground trees that uh, had a very similar wake up process. And I think the reason for that is really in the nighttime temperatures. This greenhouse just stays warmer at night and it's really compounded. Uh, all that extra heat units has compounded throughout the season to then produce these really crazy vigorous or many, many leaves on these trees. Uh, and now I just have a jungle in here. And it's gonna get to the point very soon where not only are they gonna reach the top, but they're gonna probably start bending. Um, and it's just gonna be relatively a problem. Now, the weird thing about this, although it is very warm in here, I only have one window open and I have the door open but it's still, I have not seen even on 95 degree days that it's been too warm. So that's a really good sign, I think, in the fact that there is some good airflow, but realistically, I think really what's happening is that there's so much shading in this area that a lot of that sunlight is not really getting trapped in here. And maybe the uh, extremely warm temperatures are really at the top of the greenhouse as heat rises. Uh, this um, capper fig has really gone crazy. And unfortunately, it did not, believe it or not, it, it did not put out its crop very quickly, its second crop. So we had the Brabus uh, off of the male capper fig, which is technically, I believe, called the Profici. Normally, what you would do with these male figs is you would take the capper fig the Profici off of the trees, once it's been pollinated, once they're falling off the trees, they're really filled with those wasps, they're going to then take those Profici, those figs, and we're then going to put them around and they even hang them from the trees that we wanna pollinate. And then those wasps then go around and um, do their thing, they go inside the figs. But I was very surprised because I thought the next crop of figs, which I don't recall, it's either the Mamay or the Mamoni, but it's would technically be the main crop if this was a female fig. I have not seen the, the main crop form without really any assistance. There is some fruits that are forming here, as you can see. So this is the main crop, that is that crop. But really what I would have liked to have seen is that this tree does its job without any assistance earlier in the season because if we form these fruits a bit earlier, then there's time for a second main crop to form, which is again, either the mamay or the mamoni. That second main crop is where the, the wasp, the, the blastophaga overwinters in these trees. Um, and once it overwinters in them, you then have to get that through the winter time. Keep that above about 15 degrees Fahrenheit and the, the wasp will be fine. The wasp will live, it'll overwinter in there. And then in the spring, it'll come out of those wasps, or it'll come out of those figs, excuse me. And then it'll go right back into the Bravas of this upcoming season, which is the, again, the Profici. So um, I'm relatively impressed with just how big this thing is. And there's so many branches and there's two capper figs. The second capper fig is still not even close to putting out some fruits, which is a shame. But this Boga Malovo here, which is this male variety, has done exceptionally well, uh, other than maybe it's just a little bit later than what I would like. Maybe there's other reasons for that, which we're gonna get into now, because these capper figs in here are, or I'm sorry, these uh, Espaillade fig trees I have in here that are female. So we have a panache against the back. We have a Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross in, in the front side here, it's facing west. And then I have a very small tree back here that's been more difficult to get going because it's it was not as well established when I planted it. But this is a Colden en Blanc that's 
actually looking very, very healthy. And then next season, because these, these new limbs, these cordons, these arms, I'm gonna be able to tie them down to that wire down here. Um, so these other trees though, the panache, are already in that state. They're already down to the wire. We've already been forming the spurs, which are the new shoots this year. And we've tried like hell, I've done a lot of staking to try to get these branches enough space so that they have enough light to fruit. And without that light, it'd be very, very difficult for them to actually form figs. However, they are actually now, this panache is starting to form fruits and it actually did have fruit buds. If you look down here, lower on this branch, the fruit buds were there oddly enough, but it just never formed figs. So I don't know why that is. It looks like it's doing its thing now on its own, but I really, what I should have done is come in here and pinch these trees. And I realized I should have pinched a lot of trees, but we were trying not to pinch trees this year to kind of learn more things about them, learn more about the other side of figs in terms of not pinching. Certain varieties I just believe absolutely need to be pinched every single year here and Panache is one of them. The, um, this Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, unfortunately, is so vigorous. It requires way more light. By the way, I am sweating. Like, I feel like I'm in a sauna right now. It is so hot in this greenhouse. Just standing, <laughs> just standing here is, holy crap, it's at least, I think another 10 or 15 degrees warmer than it is out here. And there's a breeze. Today's about 90, it's about 90 right now. It's probably over, could be over 100 in there, uh, if I had a guess. Today's July 17th, by the way. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, it just requires so much light to set these fruit buds. And we've talked about that in the past where we have our fig trees very densely planted, we space out the branches, we have them on the right angle, we catch that sunlight, they form the fruits. If you don't get the sunlight required, every variety is different, Every variety needs maybe a different angle to the branches or a different amount of sunlight to actually set those fruit buds. And Colonel Lippmann's is, unfortunately, I would have said before this year, it was one of the best figs you could have in this climate. That's a really high quality fruit because it's so similar to Black Madeira, but also because the fruit shape is better and it typically doesn't split nearly as often as a black Madeira, but you could see how healthy this is, how vigorous this is, how big the leaves are. Obviously the leaf pattern's a lot different. Um, and therefore it also, by the way, I'm sorry, just requires a heck of a lot more light. So this thing really just needs more intense light or it just needs to be in more hours of light. And unfortunately, as it is right now, it's noon-ish and the sun's just coming across these trees, these shade trees here. And these shade trees, really this whole area doesn't really light up till about 11. And then we have more shade trees and then maybe goes across over here. So this, this greenhouse is just not very well lit. And that's the big problem is that the varieties themselves in here, like Panache, like Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross, require a lot of light to set those fruit buds but they're just not getting it. And it's even intensified, I think, because it's, in, it's under plastic, right? It's under these panels, which is then diffusing the light, weakening the light, I should say, it's probably a better term. It's just not as intense. So the problem is now compounded even further. Um, even though the trees are so big and so vigorous and they've grown in one season, I'm sorry, not even one season, <laughs> we're only in July. It's only like July 17th. So these trees woke up sometime around March 15th. It's been only, what is that? April, uh, all of March, April, May, June. What is that, four months? So yeah, see April 15th, May 15th, June 15th, July 15th, yeah, four months. So in four months, these trees were able to go from really only six inches off the ground or eight inches off the ground to then putting out growth that's already seven feet tall. And this space is just not big enough. It's kind of a craziness. But here's the nice thing about the Japanese espalier, the, the low cordons that you see here. 
is that they are meant to get the amount of light that they need. That's their form. Their form aids in that particular fact in that we thin out these new shoots at the bottom as we talked about earlier in the season. And I, because I thinned out a lot of these shoots, I didn't keep all of them. Why is that so dark? But you guys can kind of tell what's going on. The point, the point is, is that I had to thin out the shoots, but even thinning these guys out to about every foot, although some of these over here are closer, but even if I thinned them out to every foot, it just wasn't enough. There just wasn't enough light in here regardless. And uh, so as a result, this kernel Lipman's is probably not going to fruit. Maybe there is a fruit that could form at the very tips, the very tops of the branches now that maybe they're getting a bit more light. Maybe if I had a branch that stuck its head out of the, out of the greenhouse, it might get enough light and then somehow fruit. But at this point, I think it's too late. Even pinching wouldn't help because the fruit buds have never formed. So even though I'm going to pinch the panache, can't do anything about this, this kernel Lipman's. It just needs uh, really just a better environment. It needs more light. And that's all there is to it. So that's kind of the, the update here of what are, really what I wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, it just is unfortunately a bit of a shame, but there is some pluses and there is some good things that have come out of this little trial here, I guess. And that, that's really what we want in the future is to grow these figs in a greenhouse to protect them from rain, have higher fruit quality. You can obviously tell the production is going to be insane, assuming you have enough light. And um, yeah, so that's kind of it there, guys. Um, this bed here is actually quite a stark difference than what is in the greenhouse, just based off of the heat units. There isn't a whole lot more light this bed gets, although the trees are not as well established. But the bed over there is way far ahead of this one, and it's more comparable to this greenhouse, but you could tell the greenhouse is just, because of that, warmer heat units, and there's more heat units at night, it just goes a, a long way towards uh, a lot of growth, and therefore, given enough light, should be enough, a lot more fruits, excuse me. So we're not gonna give up, but I think what I'll do is probably either take out this kernel. I, you know, I'm not going to take it out. I'm going to cut it back and graft onto these, these stalks here. I'm going to probably graft a number of different varieties onto these shoots that have come up from the arms. And that way, it's not a total waste. I'm not convinced if the panache is or isn't a total waste, but I like having this cold and en blanc now that it's super healthy. Uh, that's great, and we'll probably continue with that as well. But yeah, that's kind of the update here, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you for the next videos. Take care.